Hello viewers, we are Gadarunal taking you through the story of A Level Pure Mathematics. In this video, we are going to go through the topic of integration of trigonometrical functions. So this topic is suitable for students in both Senior 5 and Senior 6 offering principal mathematics as part of their combination. So this is so far our progress on this platform and all these topics where we see the ticks. So first of all, pure mathematics is divided in two five parts. One is algebra and they will expect two questions section A and two questions section B. Next is trigonometry where you expect one question section A, one question section B. Next is geometry where you expect one question section A, one question section B. Next is vectors where you expect one question in section A, one question in section B, and lastly, calculus we expect three questions in section A and three questions in section B. So each topic which is ticked means that we have already covered it on this platform. So if you have just joined, just go in the playlist and search for A Level Pure Mathematics and you will see that section where all these vi videos are available. So I think you see that you have done some good work on calculus and vectors and trigonometry. More work needs to be done on geometry and algebra. So what we are going to do, we shall first concentrate on this remaining part of calculus, which is... So in this video, we are going to go through integration of trigonometrical functions. And next will be differential equations and its applications. When after that, we shall be able to go through these two parts what is geometry and algebra so we shall go to the topic of today so the topic is integration of trigonometrical functions so previously we saw derivative of trigonometrical functions and we saw that these derivatives are also available in your mathematical logbook and these are the ones this the the section of differentiation we are interested on in the ones which have trig and this was this, 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 this and that. So all those ones we saw them in the previous video. Now we shall go to integration. Now the reason why I have brought it is because integration is the reverse of differentiation. For example, if you look at this, when I differentiate cos x, I'll come up with negative sine x what does that mean it means that when i integrate sine x i'll come up with negative cos x now because this is an indefinite integral we have to add a constant of integration that is why you see plus c on all our integrals so each time you integrate an indefinite integral just remember to put a constant of integration similarly when I differentiate sine x, I'll come up with cos x. What does that mean? It means that when I integrate cos x, I'll come up with sine x. Then when I differentiate, I also know that when I differentiate tan x, I'll come up with sec squared x. What does that mean? It means that integrating sec squared x gives you tan x. Then when I differentiate sec x, I'll come up with sec x tan x. That means that integral of sec x tan x gives you sec x. Then differentiating cosec x gives you negative cosec x cot x what does that mean it means that integral of cosec x cot x gives you negative cosec x and lastly differentiating cot x gives you negative cosec squared x so what does that mean it means that integral of cosec squared x gives you negative cot x so these ones the good thing that is that these integrals are available can be got indirectly in your mathematical logbook because in your mathematical logbook you have those derivatives so what you do just remember that integration is the reverse of differentiation so this is what you need to always know so that is why you need to have a mathematical logbook now in this case x i think we see this that x is an angle measured in radians so you have to be very very keen with these integrals of trigonometrical functions because the angle must be in radians the angle must be in radians if it is in degrees you have to first change to radians by using the formula that one degree is equal to pi over 180 rad
So now we shall go to the first method. This method is recognizing presence of a function and its derivative. So always this is the first method to look for when given an integral. And such an integral is in this form whereby it, uh, there is a constant, a derivative of this function. I think we realize that the function is the one which has a power. And what is inside is what we call the function without the power. And when I differentiate this, we realize that I'll get what is outside the box bracket. So when that when you realize that, just know that that is a function and is derivative. And therefore, to us to solve such an integral, you need to go through these four steps. The first step is to increase the power n by one, say so that it becomes n plus one. So why why do we do that? It is because when you look at this second step, we are going to differentiate this. And remember, differentiation is the reverse of integration. Now, when we differentiate, remember the formula for differentiating, you have to reduce the power by 1. That is why we have to first increase the power by 1 so that when we differentiate, we can go back to the given function. So that is the reason why we have to first go through this step 1 of increasing the power by 1. Then after step one, we go to step two where we have to differentiate this function. I think we realize that we are not differentiating the whole of this integral which is given. We are differentiating only this function raised the this power, but the power increase by one. Step three says put integrals on both sides and step four adjust the numerical factor to obtain an integral similar to the given expression. Now this one is not easy to understand only and you can only understand it when we go through the worked examples. So let's go to the worked examples or such a method. So now we shall go to question one. Question one says find the integral of sine squared 4x cos 4x with respect to x and hence evaluate this from 0 to pi over 8. So like I said, if you look at this sine squared 4x, this one has, like I this is always a power. Now because the power, it means that in the bracket there will be sine 4x. Now if, when I differentiate sine 4x, I realize that I'll come up with 4 cos 4x. And this cos x is outside the bracket. Therefore, that is a function and this derivative. So what do I do? I have to first go through step 1, which says that, Increase the power of this by 1. When I increase it by 1, I'll come up with this. Then from there, I'll go to step 2, where I have to differentiate. So when I differentiate, differentiate this one. How do we differentiate? First is bring down this power. That is why you see 3 there. Then after that, reduce the power by 1. When I reduce the power by 1, I'll come up with this. Then after that, I say the next part is to... Differentiate the inner brackets. When I differentiate the inner bracket, I'll come up with 4 cos 4x. So with that, I have differentiated. And next is to simplify and put integrals on both sides. So this is now step 3. Put integrals on both sides. When I put an integral here and here, you will, let, you will realize that this integral and this derivative, they cancel each other because integration is the reverse of differentiation so integrating and differentiating the effect cancels out so this one will cancel out but this one does not so i have to integrate that now next i'll go to step three step three says express on, sorry step four you adjust the integral to get the required integral so in this case at this point you realize that in my given question there is no 12 here. This 12 is not there. It is only a 1. So what does that mean? It means that I have to take this one, this side, so that I can get the given integral. So in that case, this is now step 4. I think you realize that why I told you that it's not easy to understand step 4 unless we go through worked examples. And we shall go through more worked examples so that you can easily understand that step 4 because it is very vital. So after that, I'll just come and conclude. Now, concluding requires you to put a constant of integration. Always remember that you have to put a constant of integration as long as the integral is 
indefinite. After that, we shall go to, th to the hence part. Hence part, they wanted to integrate from 0 to pi over 8. So I come and say that this integral is, is the same as this, but now with limits. Now, I think we also realize that when they give you limits, you don't put the constant of integration. That is why here you don't see any plus C here. Why? Because it has limits. Next, we substitute the limits. Start with the upper limit and put it there. Minus, substitute the lower limit to get that. The next is to simplify. This one, sine should be pi over 2. That is why I told you that always the angle has to be in radians. That is why here we are using pi over 2. So if you by mistake you put 90 degrees, it will not be okay. It has to be in radians. So this is pi over 2, so sine cubed pi over 2 gives you 1. Why? Because sine pi over 2 is always 1, and 1 cubed is always, it remains 1. However, sine 0 is 0, therefore 0 cubed remains 0. But outside there was this 1 over 12, so 1 over 12 times 1 gives you 1 over 12 as the answer. So that was question 1. Now we shall go to question 2 which says that integ find the integral of sex squared x tan x with respect to x and let's evaluate this. So now here this is a bit unique because you realize that the one with the power is not the function. Why? Because when I differentiate tan x I'll, I'll be able to come up with sex squared x. So in that case, it is tan which is a function. So integrals containing tan are very, very tricky. So you must be conscious as you do them. Therefore, in this case, you have realized that tan x is a function. So you have shall go to step two whereby you have to, sorry, step one whereby you have to increase the power of the function by 1. So here the power was 1, now the power is 2. After that step 1, we shall go to step 2 whereby you have to differentiate that function with the power increased by 1. So when I differentiate this, the formula says bring down the power. That is why there is 2 here. Reduce the power by 1, so that is why there is only tan x here to power 1. The next is to differentiate the inner brackets. So when I differentiate tan x, I come up with 6 squared x. So that is step two. Now step three says put integrals on both sides. Now after putting integrals on both sides, I will still remember that integral and the differentiation they cancel out because one is the reverse of the other. But this side should remain, the integral will remain. So I'll come up with this. The next is to look at the given integral. Here there is only one, but here we still have two. So what does that mean? It means that you're going to take to this side. When I do that, I'm going to come up with that as the answer. So this two goes this side to become a half tan squared x, which is this. But because it is an indefinite integral, you have to add a constant of integration. Then now we shall go to the hence part. So hence part, the integral we've already got it. What we need to do is to substitute the limits. So substituting the upper and lower limits, I'll come up with that. Then simplify, I'll come up with that. Then use the calculator, I'll come up with that. Or by lemons, by I, you realize that a half times one is always a half. So now we shall go to the special case of this method of function and its derivative. So special case, sometimes the derivative may contain part of the function. In this case, we don't increase the power of the function. We only differentiate the function straight away, and these derivatives include. Now, there's something fun. I think realized that when I differentiate sec x, I will still get sec x in my derivative. And also, when I differentiate cosec x, I'll still get cosec x in my derivative. So, what does that mean? It means that in that case, we don't go through step one. Because step one always said you first increase the power by one. But because here the function is still available in the derivative, that is why we don't increase the power by one. So each time the function is a sec or a cosec, always remember that the 
power must not be increased it must be left as it is now with that we can go through some questions for you to easily master the concept so we shall go to through question one you see that integrate cosec cubed x cot x with respect to x So still in this case, we shall just get the whole of this to be the function. This time we don't increase the power by 1. We just leave it as it is. Then we differentiate it. Now when I differentiate, bring, the power, bring down the power. That's why you see 3 there. Reduce the power by 1. That is why you see 6 squared x there. Then differentiate the inner bracket to come up with this. The next is put integrals on both sides to come up with that. And after that, this cancels. And this integral, there is no th negative 3 there. So this negative 3 has to go this side. So we'll come up with negative 1 over 3 cosec cubed x plus the constant of integration. That was question 1. Now we shall go to question 2. Integrate sec cubed x tan x with respect to x. So still here there is sec. So we don't increase the power in this case so as long as it is sec the, as long as the function is sec or cosec don't increase the power so here we shall just leave it as it is with the power 3 then differentiate it now differentiating means you bring down the power reduce the power by 1 differentiate the inner bracket to come up with that then put integrals on both sides then after that you'll cancel this to come up with this and that you look at the given integral, there is no 3 here. So this 3 has to go this side to come up with 1 over 3 sec cubed x plus c as the integral. Now we shall go to this integrate sec x tan cubed x with respect to x. So first of all here we need to do some modification. We shall see that sec tan cubed x is the same as tan squared multiplied by tan x. Then after that we shall now say that this tan squared x is the same as sec squared x minus 1. I think you remember that under the video of trigonometry. Then when I open brackets, I'll come up with two parts. One will be sec cubed tan x, another one will be sec x tan x with respect to x. I think you realize that I'm putting these two functions in a bracket. So that means that I'll, I'll integrate this one alone to get this, and also integrate this one alone as you see here. So now when I integrate this, I'll come up with this. So how does it come about? In this case, the function is sec x. Now, because, like I told you, as long as the function is sec or cosec, we don't tamper with the power. So, what we are going to do, you are going to maintain the power, which is 3, and divide by the that maintained power, which is 3 here. That is why you see here, 1 over 3 sec cubed x. I think you remember that in the previous question. Then when this one, we already saw it under the standard integrals, that integral of sec x tan x gives you sec x. This minus is maintained, which is here, and you have to put a constant of integration. So we have covered the method of recognizing function and its derivative. Now next will be the method of using factor formula. So now factor formula was covered in detail under the video of trigonometry and so it's available in the playlist so now we are going to just quote out the identities so these are the four main identities of interest under factor formula one is that cos cos when it's a product of cos cos here it will be cos plus cos and the angle one will be sum and the other will be difference and also remember that there is a half here outside so all that is exp was explained in detail under the video of trigonometry. Then when it is a product of sine sine, here it will be minus. But the first, I, the first ratio will be the a minus b. You have to take note of that. So that means that if you start with a plus b, it implies that you must put a negative outside. The next is sine cos. Now, product of sine and cos is tricky because you have to also look at the angle, which one is bigger. So, in this first line, the angle on sine 
is bigger than the angle on cos. Now when that happens, it implies that here will come up with sine plus sine. But on the other hand, if the angle on cos is bigger than the angle on sine, it implies that this will be sine minus sine. So always take note of that as long as it comes to the product of sine and cos. Now after factor formula, we also need to know the short way of integrating a trig function with whereby the angle has a multiple. For example, cos nx where n is an integer, for example, 2, 3, 4. To integrate such, we have to first differentiate the angle. When I differentiate the angle, it will become the denominator. So differentiate the angle and make it the denominator. Therefore, when I differentiate nx, I'll come up with n, and that n will become the denominator. That's why you see here 1 over n. The now that I will ask myself, when I, diff when I integrate cos, what will I get? I'll come up with sine and the angle has be maintained, plus the constant integration because it's an indefinite integral. On the other hand, if I'm to integrate sine nx, first of all, differentiate the angle. Now this one is a bit confusing because we are under integration, but again you have to differentiate, so it shouldn't confuse the two. It is the angle which you first differentiate. When I differentiate this angle, I'll make it the denominator. Then that I'll ask myself, when I integrate sine, what do I get? I'll come up with negative cos with the angle maintained. So that is why you, can, you see a negative 1 over n cos nx plus c. So now we shall go through a number of examples for you to easily grasp the concept. So first of all, it says integrate cos 6x cos 4x with respect to x. So now here, because this is the product in between two functions, you have to first use factor formula. Now, cos cos gives you cos plus cos. One angle will be sub addition, another one will be subtraction. So when I simplify, it will be a half in brackets cos 10x plus cos 2x. And now, now the reason why we use factor formula is because there's no way you can integrate two functions when in between them there is a product or a division. The easiest way is to use factor formula so that in between them there is, there is either a addition or subtraction. So when that happens, you can easily integrate term by term. So now in this case, I can integrate this alone, then also integrate this alone. Because it is in between them, there is plus or minus. So now next is to integrate each of these independently. So when I integrate cos 2x, I'll come up with a half sine 2x and when I integrate cos 10x I come up with 1 over 10 sine 10x so the negative is this minus is maintained here and this half is maintained there then plus a constant of integration now when I open brackets I come up with the required expression which is that so that was question 2 now shall go to question 3 which is that integrate sine 6x cos 4x with respect to x. Now in this case, it is the product of sine cos and sine has a bigger angle. When sine has a bigger angle, it becomes sine plus sine. So here we shall use factor formula and come up with sine plus sine here. That was simplifying. This gives you 10x, this gives you 2x. Therefore, integrating sine 10x gives you negative 1 over 10 cos 10x. Integrating sine 2x gives you negative 1 over 2 cos 2x. This half is maintained and the constant of integration has to be seen. Then open brackets will come up with that required expression. So that was question 3. Now we shall go to question 4. Question 4 says, integrate sine 4x cos 6x with respect to x. So still we use factor formula, but this time because cos has a bigger angle, here it will be sine minus sine. So we'll come up with that integral, therefore integrate sine 10x to come up with this, then integrate sine 2x to come up with that. It's a negative, that is why you see here, this was minus and this is plus because Integrating sine 2x gives you negative 1 over 2 cos 2x. So the negative cancels with this negative to give you a positive. 
then open brackets will come up with this required expression. So that was method two. Now we shall go to method three, which involves integration of odd powers of cosine and sine. Now, odd powers of cosine and sine are integrated using Pythagoras theorem in the form this. So we have to, I think you remember this identity under the video of trigonometry. So when I make cos squared x the subject, I'll come up with this. And also when I make sine squared x the subject, I'll come up with this. Now these two are the ones which are of interest. Now let's see how they are used. So question one says integrate cos cubed x with respect to x. So we know that cos cubed x is the same as cos squared x multiplied by cos x. Now this cos squared x is where we use this identity. So shall substitute it with 1 minus sine squared x. Then open brackets to come up with that. Now in this case we can integrate term by, we can integrate this alone and also this alone. Now the integrating cos x is a standard integral and gives you sine x. Then integrating sine squared x cos x, this is under function and is derivative and you'll come up with 1 over 3 sine cubed x plus the concept of integration. So at this point I should show you the short form of using function and its derivative without going through all the four steps. Now I think we realize that here we have only moved from this integral to the final answer. So how does it come about? One is that look at this power, increase it by one, and write this function with the power increased by one to come up with sine cubed x. Then divide by the new power which is three. That is why you see a one over three. So that is a short way of using function and its derivative. And you still get all the marks. So that was question one. Now we shall go to question two, which says that integrate cos to power five x, cos x to power five with respect to x. So we know that cos x to power five is the same as cos x to power four multiplied by cos x. And this cos x to power four is the same as cos squared x, everything squared, which is this. Now this inside the bracket is cos squared x and the other two which is what is outside. Then when I open brackets, expand this bracket, I'll come up with this. Then open the entire bracket to come up with this. I think we realize that I'm putting all the functions in the in a bracket. So now I can integrate part by part. So when I integrate cos x, this is a standard integral. I'll have to integrate that alone, integrate this alone, and also in the integrate that alone. So when I do that, this gives me sine x and this. This is now function as this derivative and like I told you, the short form is to look at this power on the function, then write the function with the power increased by 1. So the power is 2, so the, it will be increased by 1 to come up with 3. Then divide by the new power. That is why you see here 3 as the denominator. Now where is this 2 coming from? This 2 is coming from this one because it was originally there in the integral. So 2 times 1 over 3 gives you 2 over 3. Then this one is also function and its derivative. So look at the power is 4. Increase it by 1, you'll come up with sine x to the power 5. Then divide by the new power, that is why you see a 1 over 5. Plus the constant of integration. So the, moving from here to here, you'll still get all the marks. There's no need to say that. Let me first go through all the steps. Step 1, step 2, step 3, and step 4. No. Which we learned under the first method of functional derivative. As long as you master it, the, master the concept, just write the final integral and you'll get all your marks. So that was question 2. Now shall go to question 3, which is that if find the integral of sine cubed x with respect to x. Now sine cubed x, that's like we did for cos cubed x, sine cubed x was the same as sine squared x multiplied by sine x. Now this sine squared x will be changed to become 1 minus cos squared x. I think we saw that. Then after that we shall open brackets to come up with 
sin x minus cos squared x sin x then now is to integrate each term so integrate this alone and also integrate this alone now integrating sine I'll come up with negative cos x and also this one is a function and this derivative so increase the power by 1 to come up with cos cubed x then divide by the new power that is why you see here 1 over 1 over 3 now I think realize that because the answer has co then you must get a negative now the reason why you see a plus because the negative here with this negative gives you a positive then now we shall go to question 4 which is that integrate sine x power 5 so like we did under cos x power 5 we shall do the same pro we shall follow the same procedure this becomes sine to power x power 4 multiplied by sine x expand this one to come up with this open that bracket to come up with that then expand further to come up with that the next we are going to integrate term by term so now next is to integrate so when i integrate sine x i come up with negative cos x then this is the function and its derivative so increase the power by one to come up with cos cubed x divided by the new power that's why you see three here and this two comes from this two which was originally there then also you realize that this was minus and this is now plus why because as long as the output after integration has co the out the result must have a negative so that negative with this minus gives you a positive this one is also function as derivative increase the power by one to come up with this then divide by the new power that's why you see one over five here and the thing you realize that this was plus and this was minus because the output has co meaning that it must have a negative So that was question 4. Now shall go to question 5, which is that integrate this. So in this case, sine cubed x will be changed, will be re rearranged to come up with sine squared x multiplied by sine x. Then one sine squared x will give you the, will be changed into that. Then we open brackets to come up with that. The next is to integrate term part by part. So integrate this one function and its derivative. I think by now you know the concept. So integrating this gives you this, and integrating this gives you that, plus the constant of integration. Then question six. Question six integrate this. So like we did in question five, we are going to do the same in question six. This cubed will be rearranged to come up with cos squared x multiplied by cos x. Then change expressed cos squared x in terms of sine to come up with that. Then open brackets to come up with that. How that you are going to integrate part by part. Integrate using the method of functional derivative which I have already taught you. So this one gives you this and this gives you that. So we have dealt with odd powers of cosine and sine. But what if the powers are even so what we do here we use the double angle identity which say that cos 2x is equal to 2 sine 2 cos squared x minus 1 and is also equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared x so that means that sine squared x is equal to a half in brackets 1 plus cos 2x and sine squared x is equal to a half in brackets 1 minus cos 2x so for sine it is minus and for cos it is plus so with that we shall go through some questions so question one says integrate cos squared x so cos squared x like we said we use this identity so the same as this integral the after that we shall now integrate integrate one gives you x and integrate cos to x gives you a half sine to x plus the constant of integration and this half is maintained then open brackets will come up with this that was question one what about question two integrate cos x power four so cos x power four is the same as a half in brackets one plus cos two x everything squared so this one gets us for one square and this one gets us for the other square 
Then open brackets will come up with this. Now it is a quarter because a half squared gives you a quarter. Then shall integrate part by part. This one is, is represented by that, this is represented by this, and this is represented by that. So now next is to integrate. So integrating 1 gives you x, but there's this a quarter, you end up getting a quarter x. Then integrating this is the same as, remember this angle alone is 2, the derivative of this angle is 2, therefore it is 2 over 2 which cancels out to give you 1 that is why here I only see a half because the 2 of the of this from this angle has cancelled out with this 2 you end up with only sine to x here otherwise it would have been 2 sine to x over 2 but that one 2 cancels will remain with only a quarter then here this is still a p uneven power so you have to use double angle still to change it in this form. Out of that we shall now also integrate it. So integrate this one gives you x and this one gives you a quarter sign for x. And the end of expanding everything gives you this as the required integral. So now we shall go to question 3 which is that integrate sine squared x. So still we shall use double angle identity to come up with this. Now for sine this is a minus. Then integrate, you will come up with that as the answer. Then question 4, integrate sine x power 4. So like we did for cos x power 4, you do the same as this. This one expressed in terms of half ang double angle. And then you expand to come up with that. Then you have to integrate part by part. So integrating this gives you this. Integrating this gives you that, and this gives you that. Now here you cannot integrate this one, that's why you have to first change it to double angle. Then all that you can now easily integrate it to come up with this. Then in the end you expand everything to come up and click like terms to come up with that. So that was odd and even powers of sine and cosine. What if it was powers of tan. So powers of tan, like I told you, tan is very tricky and is treated in a special way. So integrals are integrated using identity. Tan squared x is equal to sex squared x minus 1. And from mathematical table, you are going to realize that. Okay, so let's see the mathematical table. If you look at this table, you realize that in this part of tan, there is a unique identity and that is log sec x of base e. Now this base e is a unique word to mean natural logarithm. So natural logarithm, that's why you see here, I've said that integral of tan x with respect to x is the same as this one which is in the mathematical table but also this log base e is the same as natural log and it's written as lin. So it does this, this expression is the same as this expression and it is also the same as this because when you get the reciprocal of this one inside the, this, this magnitude, you put a negative outside. So any of this is okay to be used. So when you realize that from our mathematical table, we can go through some questions. So question 1 says, integrate tan squared x with respect to x. So you come out here and say that remember that tan squared x is the same as one, the same as cos squared x minus one. So you come and substitute. Then from there, the good thing I know that this integrating sex squared x is the standard integral and gives you tan, and also integrating one gives you x. So basically, that is what they wanted. Question two: Integrate tan cubed x with respect to x. So tan cubed x is the same as tan squared x multiplied by tan x. Now tan squared x is this, then the remainder, remaining tan x is here. When I expand, I'll come up with that. Then I'll integrate. This is function and its derivative. I think you remember it. We also we did this very question and the function is derivative. Then also integrating tan, you have already seen that it's the same as negative lean cos x. Now the negative cancels with this negative to give you a positive. 
then integrate tan x power 5. So tan x power 5 is the same as that, rearranging in, in that form. Then you open expand this bracket and also expand further to come up with that. So now shall integrate term by term. So this one is functionalized derivative, but the function is sec x. Therefore, like we said, as long as it is sec x, sec x, or cosec x, we don't tamper with the power. So that is why here the power is maintained as 4, then divide by the that maintained power, which is for here. Then this one is also functionalized derivative, but the function is tan x. So increase the power by 1, you get tan squared x. Divide by the new power is a half. But that a half with these two cancels out to remain with 1. So the minus is maintained. Then here, we already saw under my particle table that integral of tan x is negative lin cos x. So you write it as that, plus the constant of integration. So that was question 3. Now shall go to question 4 which says that evaluate this with respect to x. So I'll first integrate x to come up with this a half x squared then integrate tan to come up with negative lin cos x. I think we saw that in the mathematical table. Then next is to substitute limits. Start with the upper limit to give you this box bracket followed by the lower limit to give you this box bracket. The next is to simplify this one. This is 3 over 2 minus a half. 3 over 2 minus a half gives you 1. Then negative lean cos root 3 minus minus. So this becomes plus cos, sorry, lean cos 1. It becomes this one which is there plus this which is there. So what I've done, I've created like terms. So next is to use a calculator to come up with that. So here you must remember that the calculator should be in radians. So because angles must be in radians. So this one gives you that and this one gives you that. But remember this is a magnitude sign. What does that mean? It means that this negative becomes positive. Then you can use the calculator still to come up with that values. This is that, this is that then in the end you come up with this as the final answer. So now in this video I think we realize that we have not used UNEB questions in our examples. What I'm going to do I'll leave behind UNEB questions for you to try out. So that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching and be reminded that the next video will be on differential equations. So if you haven't yet subscribed, please click on the subscribe button below this video so that you can receive updates when the next video on differential equations has been uploaded. And also, if you know of any student who is not yet on this platform, please share the link of this video with them via social media platforms like Facebook and WhatsApp so that they can all benefit us a family.